In the early 1860s, America was torn apart by violent civil war. The South seceded from the Union, refusing to abolish slavery. Outnumbered and outgunned, the Southern rebels fought long and hard. The cost in lives and money was high for all involved. Together, these four young girls faced life during those dark days of the Civil War. This is the story of these little women. sort of bare without any presents. Yes, I wish we weren't so poor. I can remember a time when the family had money and the floor was full of gifts for all of us. Oh, so do I. It's sad. It's not fair that we're so poor. We have to remember there are people much poorer than us. We should be happy we have both Mama and Papa. Yeah, but Papa's away fighting in the war. I guess we all have to make some sacrifices for our country. Meg's right. I sure do wish I was a boy. Then they let me fight for the North with Papa. Bang! Yep. I do too. No, you should stay here and practice your music so that when I'm a rich and famous writer someday, then I'll be able to buy you your very own piano. Oh, will you? Yes, and I'll get Meg hundreds of nice dresses. Oh, yeah? And for Amy, oh, I've got it, jewels. That's wonderful. There's no need to be depressed anymore. I think we should practice our Christmas play. Can you play something weird and scary? I guess so. Amy, I wrote you a new scene. But I can't do the old scenes. It's real easy. Oh, load we go, help load we go. And that's all you say. Then just faint. Okay? Lodrigo, help me, Lodrigo. And then I faint just like a princess. I am one, aren't I? Yes, and you're locked in the tower of the evil Hugo. And now Hugo appears suddenly. Now scream, oh, oh Lodrigo, help, help me, me Lodrigo. Lodrigo. And then Meg comes in playing Lodrigo. And who are you? Who, me? I am the evil Hugo. <laughs> and I have come here to do you evil. There's no need to be scared, Amy. You can start playing, Beth. I 
just die. What's the matter with it, Beth? One of the keys is broken. Well, we can do it without music, okay, Amy? Mm -hmm. I am the evil Hugo, <coughs> and I have come to do evil to you. Ah, Ludrigo, help, Ludrigo! That sure was good acting, Amy. Really? Why don't you girls take a break? I made some nice tea. Well, thank you, Hannah. Careful, it's hot. Huh? That darn neighbor boy keeps looking in here when he should know it ain't right to do such things. <gasps> oh. There he is. Hannah? He's only Mr. Lawrence's grandson. I didn't know Mr. Lawrence had a grandson. Joe? Oh, I want to see what he looks like. That's rude, Joe. You shouldn't stare. She's right, Joe. Stand back a little. Well, he was staring at us first, remember? He certainly looks handsome, doesn't he? He just stands there staring. <sighs> There he is again. I think I'm going over to talk to him. Well, I see they haven't even raked the snow yet. What a bunch of lazy kids. Lazy kids. Look at his suit and how tall he is. Oh, those girls. <clears throat> I can't wait to see him close up. Oh, Joe, don't be pushy. You know, I bet he'd come over if we asked him to. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, and yeah. a very Aunt Merry Christmas, Aunt March. Yes, Merry Christmas, and how are you feeling, Aunt March? I feel awful. Now you come here at once. At once. Oh, Joe, why can't you ever be careful and act the way a young girl your age is supposed to act? I'm sorry, Aunt March. Now, Amy, tell me, are you still wearing that clothespin on your nose at night to make it look straighter? Yes, I am, Aunt. It's nice that you care how you look, but it's not good to be too self-conscious. Yes, you're right, Aunt March. Well, I brought you a little Christmas present. Oh, that's very nice of you, Aunt March. She forgot me. And this is for you, Beth. Thank you very much, Aunt March. You shouldn't be so shy. I, uh, I'll try. You're going to be 13 soon. Don't be so bashful. Yes, Aunt March. Oh. Oh, well. And this is for Meg. Thank you, Aunt March. You're always so well-behaved and well-mannered, Meg. Your mother should be very proud of you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Aunt March. Hmm. Well, well, she forgot me. I knew she wouldn't get me anything. What did you say, Joe? Oh, I said Merry Christmas, Aunt March. I heard what you said before that, Joe. I'm sorry. Why don't you behave yourself like your sisters and stop acting like such a wild tomboy? I'll try, Aunt March. And are you still writing those ridiculous stories? Hmm. Are you? Yes, I am. Good. I'm glad that you are. Huh? I do not approve of your manners, but I do think you have talent. Here, Joe. For me? Oh, thank you very much, Aunt March. This is exactly what I mean. Your behavior is atrocious, and you're to come to my house next week for some instruction. What? Next week. I, uh, all right, Aunt March. Say hello to your mother. All right, we will. Hello. We will. Bye. She gave me a dollar. Me too. Then she must have given a dollar to each of us. Let's go to Mr. Grace's store. We could go right now, all right? 
Does anybody want to help me? Meg? Beth? Amy? No. So, you've come to buy yourself some gifts, have you? Our aunt just gave us a dollar for Christmas. That's nice of her. I would like to look at your hats, please. Music for me? I'd like a dollar's worth of pastel colors, Mr. Grace. Feel free, girls, to look around as much as you'd like. I think I'm going to buy this. If you don't mind me telling you, Joe, why don't you read Duke's Conspiracy? I hear it's good. Okay. This looks good, too. Thank you for telling me about it. Well, why don't you buy that one? I'll lend you the Black Revenge, and you can bring it back when you're through. Great. Thanks a lot. By the way, Joe, has anyone ever told you you have very long and beautiful hair? Thank you, Mr. Grace. Well, Mr. Thomas at the barber shop might be interested in buying some of it. What for? Oh. Why, to make wigs, he'd be willing to pay handsomely for a head of hair as fine as yours. <gasps> no, I would never do anything as awful as that. Joe's hair is very important to her. That's a horrible thought. Sorry, I was just trying to help you girls. Pick the halls with bows of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Stroll the ancient youth I carol. Fa la 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 la. Look, Mama's home. Hello, girls. Welcome Hello, home, Mama. Mother. Mm. I'll take that. Oh, you must be cold. Guess what? Aunt March came over today and gave each of us a dollar. That was nice of her. She said to say hello. Now, I brought home a very special surprise that I can't wait to show all of you. What is it? A letter from Father. Oh! That's great. Oh. <laughs> read it, Mama. Please, read it now. To my dearest wife and children, I wish that I could be there with you. I love and miss you all very much, and I hope the war will soon be over. I know that life must be very hard for all of you in Concord. When this war is over and I return, I'll try to make things the way they used to be at home. Until then, I can only send my love. This war is more horrible than anything that I can write or say to you. Uncles are killing brothers and fathers are killing sons. The tragedy of all these wasted lives saddens me. Yet, there was no other choice but to fight. If necessary, I will die for my country and the beliefs we are fighting to uphold. I know that we will win, for our cause is truly just. No man should be another man's property, and slavery must be stopped. My only hope and prayer is that I can be there with you soon. My love to Meg. Oh. To Joe. Also, Beth and Amy. Your mother needs all your help. Please try and do what you can for her. I know you will. I pray that you are all well and happy. Love, Papa. Merry Christmas, Papa. Merry Christmas. I'm going to pray hard every day for Papa to come home to us soon. Me too. Me too. What is it, Hannah? Did Mrs. Hanmel tell you? No, but I could tell something was wrong. They're such an unfortunate family. I've seen the Hanmel family, Meg, and they seem to be a lot poorer than all of us. Then I better go over there and see if I can be of any help to them. Good night. I'll try to be back soon. Good night, Good night. Mama. Huh? Huh? Look at Mama's slippers. What's the matter, Joe? Look how old they are. She needs new ones. It would be nice if she had new shoes. It's too bad we can't afford to get her new slippers. I wish that we could buy Mama the nicest pair of slippers in Mr. Grace's store. Maybe we can exchange our gifts. Huh? huh? But I wanted the watercolors all year. 
Well, we better go now, before Mr. Grace closes his store. Let's do it. Do we have to? I'll do it for Mama. We'd better leave now. Let's go. <laughs> Hurry. Let's go. Hello? Are you awake? Let's go to our rooms and pretend we're asleep. Merry Christmas, Mama. We all love you very much and hope you like the little present that we got for you. We thought that if Papa were here, he would have bought these for you. Love, Meg, Joe, Amy, Beth. <sighs> oh, they're beautiful. Must go thank them. Meg. all the food that's out here. Yes, doesn't it look delicious? I'll say it's making me hungry. Merry Christmas. Why don't you girls all sit down and I'll serve the food? I can't remember seeing this much food on one table in all my life. It's nothing special. I remember not long ago there was always this much to eat. We must have been very rich. Did I wear really nice clothes in those days, Hannah? Just diapers. Diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Mama go, Hannah? She just went over to see Mrs. Hanmill. You know, she just had a baby this morning. Huh? She had another one? Yes, as if she didn't have enough trouble feeding the other four. Your mother brought over her breakfast. She says they're cold and hungry. Your mother said it broke her heart to see them suffering that way. Uh, uh, what's the matter? The poor animals. There are a lot of people starving. We can't help everybody. But it is Christmas, and it would be a shame to waste all this good food. Mm. Mm. Girls, why haven't you eaten any of this wonderful food Hannah made? Hannah told us about the animals. It's very sad, especially on Christmas. It's awful. If you like, we could bring this to the Hanmos. I know that all this food would make them very happy. I think that's a great idea. I agree. Me too. Hmm. It's a good thing we didn't eat any of this food. I agree. Let's go now. You're all good girls, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Thank you for helping our family and Mama. It's good. Mmm. Darn this old stove. I can't seem to get it to work no matter what I try doing. Well, I'm not going to give up yet. Not so easily. Not till it's fixed. 
Isn't he cute, Mama? Yes, he is. Can I hold him? Now, be careful. Thank you. A few years ago, you were as small as he is now. Mama, I sure am happy that we came here and spent Christmas with the Hanmo family, aren't you? Yes, I am. I did it! I knew that I'd be able to do it if I just kept trying hard enough. <laughs> look at Joe's face. You look good that way. What did you say, Amy? Joe will be good. Things will be better next Christmas, Mrs. Hanmel. I know they will. Ah! Ow, that really hurt. I know. I'll get some help. Ready? I missed. Okay. Hey, I did it. Hi, I live next door to you. Would you like to come and help me dig snow? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I have a cold. That sounds awful. Oh, it's not really that bad. Why don't you come up here and visit with me? Could I? Hmm. Would you please come in, Miss March? Thank you. Young Mr. Laurie is expecting you. Let's go into the living room where we can talk a while in private. This house has to be at least four times bigger than our house. I hope that it doesn't bother you I'm so much richer than you are. Oh, no. I'm glad. I brought over some fresh plum pudding that my sister Meg made for you. Oh. And my little sister Beth told me to bring over this kitten so it can keep you company. Oh. <laughs> it's cute. This house sure is big. Who else lives here? Me, my grandfather, and Mr. Brooks. Who's Mr. Brooks? Uh, he's my private teacher. This is a rather awkward thing to tell you now, but, I mean, Mr. Brooks likes your sister. No, you don't mean Meg. That's right. She's the eldest of you. He'll be very pleased when I tell him her name. Hmm. You shouldn't be surprised. She is very beautiful, don't you think so? Hmm. Huh? I don't think Meg will appreciate this. She never even met Mr. Brooks. I I'm sorry if I said anything that offended you. I was only trying to make a little conversation. What do you think about the rest of us? I think that you're very nice, Josephine. <laughs> Maybe I overreacted to what you said. Then you're not mad at me? I have a real big temper. Mama says it's a bad thing, but I can't help it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have a very bad temper. Look at all these paintings on the wall. Who are these people? Most of them are ancestors and family. Does that one scare you? Huh? He does scare me just a little bit. <gasps> Who's that? My sister. She died when she was 13. My grandfather was very fond of her. He loved it when she'd play the piano for him. Funny. She looks like my sister Beth. Tell me, does he always look this angry? <laughs> no. Most of the time, he just looks mad. I bet deep down he's a very nice man. I can tell he has kind eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's really not that bad. He's actually quite handsome if he didn't make such scary faces. <clears throat> <gasps> oh! Listening long? Uh, hello, Grandfather. Uh, uh, I'm pleased to meet you. Hmm. I'm sorry if I said something wrong. Are you scared? Huh? Uh, not at all, Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> so, although you think I look mean, I'm not. Is that about right, Miss March? Uh, well, yes, sir. Huh? I, huh? Your house is very nice. You must be quite rich, sir. <laughs> If you mean rich in material things, yes, I've been quite fortunate. 
It really is a lovely house. Did you grow up here? I did. In fact, I was born here. Oh. Then this house looks marvelous, considering how old it must be. Oh, no, why did she say that? Hmm. Oh, I talk too much. Hmm. <laughs> huh? That's all right. You talk too much and I make scary faces. We're quite a pair. Yes. I hope you'll come again. I know Lori here would like it if you did. I promise that I'll come over again, sir. But now I have to leave. I'll walk you to your house, Joe. Stay here, Lori. You have a cold, young man. Stay inside, and I'll walk Josephine to her house. But I feel fine, sir. You won't mind if an old gentleman like myself escorts you home, will you? <laughs> but, Grandfather, uh, Grandfather, uh, I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for coming, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. I can't believe it. Oh, Catherine. My grandson, Laurie, and I were very happy Joe came by the other day. She's quite an outspoken young lady. Oh? Yes, yeah, she told me all about myself. <laughs> oh. Joe, what if I told you about talking too much? Please don't yell at her. Why, I had no idea I made such scary faces. Um, I, um... How dare you insult Mr. Lawrence like that? She meant no harm. I'd rather like it when someone speaks her mind to me. <laughs> There's no excuse for rudeness. Joe, stay here. Please, Joe, stay here. I'd like to talk to both of you. You would? It's regarding the piano I have in my living room. The one your granddaughter played? Let Mr. Lawrence finish what he's saying and don't interrupt. Ever since my granddaughter Catherine died, no one plays the piano. Joe tells me one of your daughters plays well. And I was wondering if perhaps she'd like to stop over occasionally and use it. If she oh. came, there'd be no one there to bother her, because during the daytime, there's oh. rarely anyone home. She'd be able to come when she wanted and leave when she's through. Well, now, thank you both very much, Mrs. March and Joe. Come back any time. Joe. Joe, it looks like we could both use a few lessons in behavior. <laughs> I would like to play your piano, if that would be all right with you. Oh. Well... It's Catherine. Uh, what? But Catherine's dead! I'm not. My name is Elizabeth. Oh. Uh, uh. Was that the girl we spoke yes, of? Yes, that was Beth. I've never seen her so scared. Ma'am, I'm terribly sorry. Beth is very bashful. She doesn't even like to go out very much. I've made a terrible mistake. It's not your fault, Mr. Lawrence. Beth does look an awful lot like the painting of Catherine that you have hanging up on your living room wall. I shouldn't have yelled. Don't be too disappointed if she doesn't visit you. What on earth are you doing, Beth? Who are you making those men's slippers for anyway? You know Papa can't wear those in the army where he's fighting. They're not for him. Huh? They're not for Papa? Joe! It's not nice to barge in like that. Look, Beth is going to the Lawrence's. Hmm. There she is. I don't believe it. I'm going to tell Mama. Oh. I'm at the Lawrence's first, so I get to tell Mama. Mama, Mama! What is it? Guess what? I just saw Beth going over to Mr. Lawrence's house. Really? Why do you think she went over there? She didn't say anything to me about it. 
Perhaps she went over there to visit with them. But she took the slipper she's been working on. They could be a gift. Who's playing that? I thought I told Lori never to play the piano when I'm home. He knows how it upsets me. Do you know who's playing the piano? Lori, don't worry about it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lawrence. I'll have them stop. It's all right. But I should see who it is. It's the neighbor's girl. I asked her to play. Mr. Lawrence couldn't help remembering. No, oh, but sir, she looks just like Catherine. Catherine is back, my darling Catherine. Beth's music made Mr. Lawrence deeply happy. Knowing how shy she was, he arranged to have the house empty and the piano ready for her frequent visits. Beth came often throughout that long, cold winter. Oh. Mr. Lawrence was touched by the slippers that Beth left for him that day. Then winter ended and spring arrived, bringing with it wonderful colors and new life everywhere. Mr. Lawrence's carriage. Why don't we go over and say hello? Uh -huh. <gasps> Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Say hello to Mr. Lawrence. I shall, Miss Jo. Huh? Wait for me! Well, the nerve of some people. Taking advantage of Mr. Lawrence that way, I think it's disgraceful. Her mother must have put her up to it. Her mother must have put her up to it. Mama would never do anything like that. Joe, is something wrong? Mama, can I ask you about what I heard some of the ladies saying in town today? Of course you can. It's just that they were saying that you wanted us to be friendly with the Lawrences because they have so much money can help us out a lot. Well, I promise you, Joe, that's not the case. Then you don't care whether we marry rich men or poor men as long as we're all happy? Of course not, Joe. My only concern is that my lovely daughters are happy, no matter what they decide to do with their lives. Mm. All I've ever wanted for any of you girls is that you be happy and feel fulfilled. With you, it might be your writing, with Amy, her art, and Beth, her music. I only want all of you girls to utilize those talents that God has blessed you with. What really matters is that you're honest with yourself as well as with everyone else. If you only do that, Joe, I know you'll be happy. Someday I know that I'll be a great writer and make you proud of me. Aw, oh, thank you, Mama. I feel better now that we had this talk. And on that night, Jo began her writing career.
Joe? Hmm? Why are you up in that tree? It's nice. Come on up. Oh, no. I'm not a good climber. Wait, and I'll climb down. I made this really swell mailbox for us. And it has two doors so we can exchange letters through it. It sounds perfect. Through the new mailbox, Joe and her sisters became even closer with Lori. just brought it over. Don't you think he's the most wonderful man you've ever known? Look at this. This letter came with a piano. It's addressed to you, Elizabeth March. I'm too nervous to read it. Can you read it to me, please, Joe? I can't believe this is happening to me. Sure I will. <clears throat> Dear Elizabeth, thank you for the wonderful slippers that you made for me. The crocheted flower designs are extremely beautiful. When I wear them, I will always think of you. Please accept this piano as a token of my affection. I know Catherine would have wanted you to have it. <gasps> From your grateful friend, Mr. James Lawrence. Isn't it wonderful? I wish I got a letter like that. Oh. Beth, you must thank Mr. Lawrence. That's a good idea. I'd better go now before I forget or become too frightened to. Do you want me to come with you? If you want, I can come along, Beth. No, I think it would be better if I went by myself. <gasps> I just can't believe how brave she's acting. Thank you. Oh. Mm. Joe, is the tea ready yet? In a minute. Where did Meg go? Over there with Mr. Brooks. <laughs> hmm. Yes, that's what they told me. <laughs> Meg and Mr. Brooks seem to be getting along well together. Hmm? He seems a lot older than she is. No, not really. He just seems that way. Huh? Huh? There's a boy on a raft. Huh? Uh. Stop! The current will take you into the rocks! Huh? Ah! 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 Please be careful! Help! He's almost got him! You're almost there now, Mr. Brooks! <laughs> oh! Oh, my goodness. Where is he? <gasps> you did it! I always thought that Mr. Brooks was a good huh? man. <laughs> That's what I told you. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to be afraid of us. We'd just like to know where you came from. Perhaps we could even help you. I'll bet he's a slave who's escaped from the South. Huh? You needn't be frightened. We're on your side. If we can, we'd like to help you. Did you escape alone? There's lots of us who left, but all of them's been killed. Hmm. My mama and papa, my sisters and brothers. It's so sad. <laughs> you're a brave young man. I know that if your parents were alive now, they'd be very proud of you. Oh? Someday, when this war is finally over, we will all be equal under the law, and we can live together. Huh? But this is the North, and President Lincoln has announced the Emancipation Proclamation. You're a free man. Nobody can ever own you as long as you live. You can stay or leave. That choice is yours. If you stay, I'll help you. Help me? 
You could live here and go to school also. How's that? Fine. That's most generous of you. Thank you, sir. That's great. I'm glad you're staying. Mr. Lawrence is such a kind man. Why on earth would the orphan want to run away again? He didn't even tell them that he wasn't going to stay. Why would he want to leave such a nice home and family? I wonder if he'll ever come back. No, I rather doubt that he's returning. It makes me proud to think that your father is out there fighting for a cause as noble as all men being free. By autumn, Joe had sold several stories, and some of her works were published. The hard work and long hours she spent writing were beginning to pay off. It's finished at last. Joe! What is it, Beth? Lori wants to know when you're coming downstairs. I don't know. I have too many other things to do than sit around and talk with him. But what will I say? Oh. I have to tell Lori something. Tell him anything. Tell him I went away to join the army. didn't take very long. Did it hurt you much? It huh? didn't hurt at all. Huh? It didn't hurt? Joe, wait. How many teeth did the doctor end up pulling? How many what? Teeth, silly. I didn't go to the dentist. I went to the newspaper. Look! Huh? to the order of Josephine March in the amount of one dollar for her writing services rendered. Mm. <laughs> Don't you think it's impressive? They only gave you a dollar, and you spent all that time. It may only be a dollar now, but soon I'll be making ten times that much. Still, you had to lock yourself up in your attic for weeks, and you didn't even come out once. It wasn't easy to do, but I had to. It takes a lot of hard work to be a good writer, and I know I'll get better if I keep on trying. Oh, oh, Meg! You look beautiful! Uh-huh. Lori, doesn't she look like a princess in that wonderful dress? Do I really look that nice? You look splendid. Like an adult woman. She does. Joe could not help feeling a little jealous of Meg, whose mature beauty grew more and more evident as the autumn days passed. That's right, he really did it. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. March, this telegram just arrived. Huh? <laughs> That's strange, I hope it's good news. I wonder if the war is over and Papa is finally coming home to us. Oh. Papa's been wounded, he's very sick. I have to go to Washington at once. His condition is quite serious. <gasps> What am I going to do? I don't have the money. Mama, don't worry. Oh, but... Just get packed. I'm going to Aunt March and borrow the money. I'm going there now. I'll be right back. I told your mother, and now I'll tell you. He should never have gone to war. He may be my brother, but he's wrong. But that's not important. He still needs help. Besides, when you ask a favor, you should learn to do it more properly. Oh, yes, Aunt March. I promise to work on my manners and not be as rude as I am right now. Only I need the money right away. Mama has to go to Washington now. Your father should never have left you girls alone. I was dead set against his volunteering for the Army from the very beginning. But he only tried to do what's right. That's a very poor excuse for what he did. He was always irresponsible and did whatever pleased him most. Hmm. 
He's always getting himself into trouble and expecting me to help him out. Aunt Marge? Huh? Stop saying all those bad things about him. I've said nothing against him. I've only tried to tell you that your father brought this on himself. Never mind. I know I can get the money from someone else. Forget I even asked you. Joe, wait a minute, please. <sighs> oh, her temper is worse than her father's. Oh, what am I going to do? I have to get the money somehow. I promised Mama I'd bring it back. By the way, Joe, has anyone ever told you you have very long and beautiful hair? Oh, no, anything but my hair! <laughs> now, if any of you girls need help, talk to Mr. Lawrence and look in on the hand moles from time to time. Don't worry, Mama. I'll look after them while you're away. That would be nice, Beth. I wonder why Joe hasn't come back yet. Hmm. Our carriage is ready to take you to the train depot. <gasps> you're going too, Mr. Brooks? I thought I'd accompany your mother and see if I could be of some assistance. I lived in Washington many years ago, and I know some people there. Thank you. I know it would be very hard for Mama if she went to Washington all by herself. I'm happy I can be of help by going along with her. Uh, Will you miss me when I'm gone, Meg? Yes. Mm. Ooh! Oh, what's the matter, Aunt March? Where's Joe? She left my house before I could even finish what I was telling her. I haven't seen her since she left to go see you. She must be afraid to come home after the way she acted. She even had the nerve to yell at me. Why, when I see her, I'll teach her manners. <gasps> Take this money and go to Washington. It should be enough for train fare and living expenses. Oh. Make sure that he gets the best care. If you need help, let me know, and I'll join you as soon as possible. I promise that I will. I know that what he did made life hard on all of you, but he felt that he had no choice. He's a good man. I shouldn't have scolded Joe. I said he was wrong to go to war. I only said that because I'm so worried about him. Well, I know that what he did took great courage. I was selfish when I told him not to volunteer. I know that. It's wrong when a man can own another man. Yes, I was mad when he left us. But I know now that he did the only possible thing he could have done. Now I understand. We should be proud of every man who fought and even died so that other men can live in freedom. Oh, we are. Tell him that I love him and I pray for him every night. I'll do that. We'd better leave now or we might miss our train. I wish I knew where Joe was. Don't worry, I'm sure she's fine. Wait, here she comes now. So, she finally came home. Whew, I made it. Joe! I'm glad you finally got here. Maybe now I can finish what I was telling you before. I was able to get some money for you. <gasps> oh? This is $25, Joe. Where did you get it? Don't worry, Mama. I promise you I didn't steal it or borrow it. I earned all of the money myself. You see... I sold something to Mr. Thomas. <gasps> oh, Joe! Oh, my! It feels nice and I won't have to comb it so often. It'll be just fine if I don't catch cold. <laughs> Your hair, Joe! Your beautiful hair! You shouldn't worry about it. It'll grow back. Joe, I love you. I love you, Mama. Josephine, you're quite a young lady. I'll never forget the sacrifice you made to get me this money. What your mother is telling you is that it took a special person to do what you've done. Someone like your father. I'm almost as stubborn as you are, but even I have to admit that I was wrong. I'm sorry. I know you didn't mean the things you said, Aunt March. Not most of them. This money will do a lot to help Papa. I'm sure he'll be very proud of what you did. You're still rude. 
Yes. And bad-mannered. Yes. And your temper is atrocious. Yes. And I know I shouldn't be that way. And despite all of that, I love you dearly. Oh, and I love oh. you too. I don't know why you spend all your time working. It's simple. I need the money, and besides, I enjoy it. I don't only work for the money, although we do need it badly. I know that if I'm going to ever be a really good writer, I'll have to keep working at it. You will. I know it would be a job that would make me happy. Joe, come huh? quickly. Beth is sick. Don't come near me. Oh, Beth. Oh, my goodness. Beth. Beth. Stay away. Oh. Beth, what's happened to you? I've never seen you look so sick and pale. The handmill's little baby boy just died. My God, that's awful. But how? The doctor says he died of scarlet fever. I tried to hold him close to keep him warm, but he died in my arms. Oh, and I feel so dizzy now. That means that you must... Oh, I didn't think of that before I came home. I wouldn't have come home if I'd known. Oh. Oh, Beth. You shouldn't oh. get so close. Oh. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Oh. I think you have a high fever. Go and rest, Beth, and I'll get Dr. Burns right away. No, I'll get him. Oh, please, hurry, Lori. Hmm. It would be a good idea to isolate Amy until we're sure about Beth. Do you think it's scarlet fever? Most likely. There isn't anything we can do until the fever breaks. I suppose we can send Amy to Aunt March's house to stay. Yeah, we can do that. Beth looks terrible. Mm. Dr. Burns, how is Beth? Well, it's difficult to say, really, at this point. Has she regained consciousness? No, not yet. It might be best if we call Mrs. March home. You can't. I'll take care of her. Mama can't leave Papa in Washington. Not now. I really think it would be best if your mother came home to see her. Do you think that Beth is dying? It's too early to tell yet. But yes, it doesn't look good. This can't be happening. She's such a good child. Poor Beth. I wish that there was some way that I could make her feel better. Pray. I know that if she were well enough to, that's just what she'd ask us to do for her now. Beth, please, please. You must get better. Dear God, please, spare the life of Beth, my dear sister. Mr. Dozed off. Beth. Oh. Here you go, Beth. Joe, Joe, how is Beth? <sighs> Tell us, has the fever gone down yet? No, not yet. Oh. Mm, that's bad. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> you can't give up hope. Besides, your mother's coming back today from Washington. How do you know that she's coming back? I asked Grandpa Lawrence, and he suggested we send her a telegram immediately. <gasps> Mom and Mr. Brooks will be on the 5 o'clock train, and Mr. Lawrence has sent his carriage to pick them up. It was too much to take care of her alone. I think you did the right thing, Lori. Thank you, Lori. Mm. I'll watch Beth for a while. Try and get some rest. Thank you, Meg. Do you think that it's possible Beth will get better after Mama comes home? Yes. I think there's a very good chance of that. Hi, Beth. How do you feel today? Can you hear me? <gasps> Joe, come quick! Huh? <gasps> get Dr. Burns and hurry! She's cold now. I don't know what's wrong with her. It can't be true! I'll get him! <laughs> How is she, Doctor? Hmm. <laughs> Beth? Hmm. It looks good. The fever broke. <gasps> oh. I think she'll be fine in a few weeks. Thank God for that. Yes, but you helped her a lot too, young lady. <gasps> mm -hmm. Thank 
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. We should be quiet and let her sleep. She'll need a lot of rest for the next few days. I'm so pleased she pulled through. Man, oh. she's going to be all right! Not so loud. We have to be quiet. Sorry! Each day, Beth regained her health and grew stronger. Beth! Amy! This is great. It's so nice to be up and walking around again. I can't wait until I'll be able to go outside. Well, you still have to be careful if you want to be well by Christmas. Yes, I will. Right, Christmas is coming in only a few more days. Anybody home? Huh? Hello! I brought a surprise over, and I know you're all gonna want to see it. What is it? Come in and show it to us. Come on, hurry! It's a little early for exchanging Christmas gifts, but wait! After you. Oh. Oh. Darling! Papa! Oh! oh. <gasps> Joe, so this is how you look with short hair. I kind of like it. You're such a pretty girl anyway. Your hair will grow back before you know it, but I'll never forget what you did for me when I needed you. Oh. <clears throat> and so, that Christmas, the March family was reunited. The war had separated them, but it could not keep them apart. With the spirits of love and self-sacrifice, old bonds were strengthened and new ones were forged. Through the scourge of war and the perils of poverty and sickness, life went on, turning young girls into little women.